Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This week, we're going to have a conversation with Daniel. I'm super pumped to kick this interview off. With that said, Daniel, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, with that said, give us, you know, I have a famous one word open. I ask everybody uh, before we kick things off. Give us one word right now to describe how you're feeling right now in this moment before we kick it off. Uh, relentless. Relentless. Love it. All right. And then now let's go right into business. So tell us, you know, a little bit about your background, a lot more about your business and, you know, how you got started, where you are, where you're headed and aha moments, whatever you feel that's important for the audience to know that way they could be right there with you. All right. Yeah. So, uh, started off, uh, my career as a real estate agent back in 2007, 2008, perfect time to start in real estate, uh, right before the market collapsed. So, um, that didn't last long. Um, but I did definitely learn a lot. Uh, from there, I actually uh, played online poker professionally, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is what led to kind of where I'm at now. Uh, online poker, you do a lot of uh, uh, extracting data uh, on your opponents and using statistics to you know, figure out how to play. Uh, and that's very similar to what I'm doing now. Uh, so now I'm kind of helping real estate teams with their data uh, and using their data to make strategic decisions. Uh, so it, it, um, it's been a weird journey, but, uh, it's been fun. What a wild ride. So real estate poker back to real estate. So exactly. speak that's so cool. Exactly. I can't, can't wait to dive deeper into that. So tell us about the pandemic. How did you shift it? How did you pivot, um, when <laughs> and shifted when the pandemic hit? It impacted all of us. Just tell us how you pivoted and got out of it. Yeah, so uh, that's actually when we started, uh, you know, building the products that we're, we're working on now. So uh, started the business as like more of a service uh, business, kind of like a, a chief technical officer, you know, um, you could hire us to be your chief technical officer. So we help uh, teams transition to platforms that I typically work with in real estate uh, and went, you know, had our best month uh, February uh, before the pandemic hit. And then pretty much all the appointments and business dried up that March. Uh, and the long-term plan was to start building API integrations and tools for the platforms we were transitioning people to. Uh, so we just started building uh, and worked out awesome actually interesting what about some wins like throughout process maybe maybe let's 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 go back to q1 of this year tell us a recent win that you put on the board that you're happy with you know and you're proud to share with us um let's see uh i guess uh, q1 we're actually acquiring a business uh so uh my assistant um when i was uh, I was working as a chief data officer for a team in San Diego uh, and I had a, an assistant when I was working there. Uh, when I went off on my own, he went off on his own and we both started businesses. Uh, and then probably six months later, once I started building API integrations, uh, brought him back into the fold. Uh, he was building an AI chatbot uh, and we actually ended up acquiring, we're, we're still in the process of acquiring his team, but uh, in January is when most of the team started working full time for us. So that was definitely a, definitely a big win. How exciting. What about on the other side in Q1? Was there a failure that you went through and what was your takeaway after you got out of it or came through on the other side? Um, I guess uh, there's been a few things that we probably built that didn't need to be built. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're definitely going to be a little more careful on uh, what we build moving forward. Um, making sure uh, people want, you know, want it before we build it. Uh, so that was probably a little bit of a wasted, wasted time. That's uh, I, we could all relate to that, Daniel. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. <laughs> totally get it, man. Thanks for putting that out there. Um, what about your point of view on thought leadership? I always, I'm curious to hear from one thought leader, that, hey, you know, what's, you know, what's your point of view on thought leadership specifically? What are the top three things someone must have, in your opinion, that would make them an awesome thought leader? Uh, open-minded, 
uh, curious, um, you know, and always improving. I love that. Um, yeah, open mindedness, improving those two alone. I mean, that resonates with me a lot. So I totally get that. Um, and you know, when you, when people start out as a thought leader, eventually they're going to be a result leader, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So exactly. as long, as long as they're, they know what they're talking about and they're doing it for a long time, like you said, you know, they got to have that. Yeah. Typically uh, you'd want it the other way. You'd want them to be a result leader first and then a thought leader. Right. 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 You know, uh, people, people don't pay much attention to someone who doesn't have results already. Yeah, very true. How about the company culture? What's your point of view on company culture? Specifically, like what are the top three things that help a company have an awesome culture? Uh, accountability from the top. Um, well, I mean, really throughout the organization. Um, that, that I think is the, the most important. Um, gratitude from the top uh as probably the primary reason i started this business was uh i wanted a place where uh people knew that their work was appreciated um uh, and uh let's see uh, an incremental improvement we're we're pretty much always trying to improve uh get better at what we do uh, so, you know, if you could foster those three, those three things and you're, you're heading in a good direction. Love it. Um, I have to ask one other question to follow up to a win. So you said that the acquisition the recent went for you. What about like the biggest win that comes to mind as I'm asking this question, just kind of take a second to think about like that go back in that moment in your head right now and just think about that win and then you know whatever you want to share with us keep a high level or detail as you want to get but tell us like i'm excited to hear like one of your biggest like the biggest win you've ever had in this business uh yeah so i guess uh when when i was working for the team uh the real estate team we were building like an analytics uh platform and then when i went out on my own uh didn't quite have the, the capacity to, to build that on my own, but one of my clients uh, was working or was, was working with a platform that was similar to what we had been trying to build previously. Uh, and so I got in contact with that company, uh, Sisu, uh, and we ended up uh, kind of, I mean, it's not like a formal partnership, but an informal partnership where we, reconfigured uh what we were instead of building an analytics platform we built an integration for an analytics platform uh wow. and so that's where a majority of our users come from is uh integration between a real estate crm follow-up boss and this uh data analytics tracking platform sisu uh so yeah that it was a it was a good pivot uh and it's worked out for everybody uh, they were probably about a year ahead of where we were. Uh, so they pretty much had us beat uh, for the analytics platform. But uh, yeah, the, repurposing it for an integration uh, has worked out fantastic. How awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so let's talk about what problem would I be facing that would make sense for me to check you out online and possibly have a conversation with you? to see if there's a possibility for me or like, what am I live? Like what challenges am I living in a day to day in, in my organization that would make sense for me to reach out to you? And like, who's the sweet spot of a client that you help. So that way we have a good insight into that. Yeah. So we typically work with real estate teams, residential real estate teams that are, you know, maybe 10, 10 agents or more. I mean, we do work with some individual agents, but typically they start coming to us when they get to around 10, 10 agents or more. Uh, so if you're a real estate team and you're working on an all-in-one platform, which is uh, all-in-one platforms, you know, are, have inundated the real estate industry, uh, but they're all obsolete now. APIs have made them obsolete. So there's a lot of limitations uh, that teams start to feel when they're working with these all-in-one platforms that they're not able to connect to other platforms uh, because all-in-one platforms don't have good APIs because why would you if you're supposed to do everything? 
so when you start uh, running into issues, then you start going to platforms that focus on doing one thing really well. So there's a CRM called Follow Boss, uh, is the best real estate CRM. Sisu is a real estate like analytics transaction management platform. Open to close is a transaction management platform. So when people start gravitating towards these platforms that to do one thing really well, then they need to start connecting them to the other real estate platforms that do one thing really well. And that's where we come in. Uh, so we're trying to build a, uh, well, we are building a, a optimized like, tech uh, stack, essentially. Uh, and so if, if you want to optimize your tech stack, that's when you would come to us. Awesome. What about a follow-up question to that? So, you know, is there a certain feature that you thought was not important and then you got feedback like, and it surprised you from your client that said, oh my God, I love this particular feature that maybe you underestimated or um, it was basically, you know, not recognized as some high level of importance, but then the feedback you receive, you're like, oh my God, this totally surprised me. This is a good feature. Um, yeah, I mean, the I, I guess the feature that I, I get requested the most that... Um, I don't particularly see as high value is uh, tracking like early, my background is in sales. So I've always uh, been under the uh, belief that uh, sales opportunity starts when you meet with a uh, decision maker. You know, once you meet with a decision maker, you can kind of figure out the likelihood it's going to close. And so that's like an opportunity. Uh, but teams want to track opportunities earlier than that sometimes before even an appointment is set uh so that's uh that's kind of surprised me interesting that's good that surprises me too when you told me that because i agree with you but then yeah. that's surprising to hear that's the yeah, exactly. yeah yeah exactly. okay so the audience has had a good opportunity to learn more about you personally they've had an opportunity to learn about your company so now if they're interested you can take this opportunity now to give out your social handles your website address that's that way if they want to find out more information and how to find you. Uh, yeah, the best place is just interface.re is the website. Uh, on Facebook, um, I believe our um, group is under, or our page is uh, Sharp Data, which is our corporate uh, entity. Uh, so I think it's, uh, you know, Facebook forward slash Sharp Data. Uh, but I'm sure if you search in, Facebook for interface, uh, you know, will pop up there as well. Awesome. Final question. I know we opened up with the word relentless and here we are at the close. So if you could sign us off with a one word close and then tell us why you're choosing this specific word that you're going to sign off with. Uh, gratitude. Gratitude. Uh, Cause everything's easier, you know, when you're grateful. Everything. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more, Daniel. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, thanks for a great conversation. Yep. Thanks, Tony. Have a good one. Too.